Hello everyone. E, um, welcome to Human Resources Management Unit Number Ten. We are closing already our ten units. This is the last one, and today we're going to be talking about the sensitive topic somehow. Well, a very divided topic, not sensitive itself. So we're going to be talking about e, unions or collective bargaining. Okay, so. Here I put a video, a uh, because unions are good and are bad. <laughs> Depends on which side you are, right? Um, we're talking about that each employee's voice is not strong by itself. So let's say, for example, you you faced an unfair dismissal, and you want to go against the company, you want to sue them, you have a, the tools, legal action, etc. But you're fighting a company that has millions of dollars, can hire the best lawyers, and they can destroy you like that. Very good. So what to do? Right. So if we think in this area, unions help in supporting the employees by providing them more tools, pro providing them more power, a, analyzing the contract, etc., etc., and they help in many, many, many ways. So unions initially were established to give a stronger voice to employees and to negotiate uh, better conditions for the employees. And that is fantastic. When we see things under that, you know, that view, that's great. But when we look into when unions start to abuse their power, then that is not right. Um, the problem is that, yeah, maybe there's a salary set up by the company negotiated with the, with the union. And initially, maybe it was an agreement, right, based on what the industry is paying, based on the industry rate. But then the union starts to make noise and wants double salary. And because they have the power, they say, double salary or we stop the operations. Give me this or we still stop operations. Give me that and we stop operations. So that becomes an abuse of power from the unions as well. So here, like I said, I'm not saying that the conditions of the employees should be overlooked. Of course not. But when this bargaining becomes too much, right? It says maybe the company is being fair. There was, for example, the case of here in Korea, the, the union for the, uh, for the, the, the rail, railroad train, I was just gonna say trains, <laughs> the trains for Korea, right? So how much they can pay them. So uh, the state and the company of the, of the trains say we cannot pay you more though we want to pay you we already on on very tight profits we are already very tight into the budget and trying to pay you one third or half more of your salary is not an option so they say okay so we're gonna stop operations but again so here is where we have to find a middle point then I cannot pay you more, but can I give you some other benefits? And that is what we can talk about. Okay, so let's let's talk a little bit about some of the things. So in this case, it's always about managing conflict between employer and employee. What employees want and what employers want. So there is, of course, national and international unions, independent, depends on the company. I say, for example, there's union of pilots. No, there's union of pilots in America, in Korea, and there's international ones. Why? Because they want better conditions for working, or etc. Right? Very good. So, um, however, let's talk about local unions. Well, these local unions, uh, whatever they help is in, really, like I said, bargain contracts. Eh, look at the conditions of the employers, and usually, they should they should work on a very democratic basis on the, the members elect their 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 steward their stewards or their their leaders and that's idea but sometimes again there are some unions that are more like a mafia so rather than 
having democracy and voting, there's already people have been there for years, takes benefits out of that. And of course, removing that of the union is impossible. Whenever employees uh, suffer a certain problem, they supposedly negotiate, but actually they just get some bribes from the company. So unethical actions also happens in unions. And that is where we need to be very careful that the unions are transparent and really there's no background behind So, like I said, the impact of unions on company performance is very strong because if uh, they are unhappy with something, they will stop operations whenever, right? I mean, they feel something is not fair, then they they may sabotage the company in some sort of way. So, um, sometimes companies prefer that there's no unions and deal with employees independently, right? Well, I get in America, it happens very often that that, that uh, the unions really, really make, especially in America, unions make a lot of chaos because sometimes their bargaining is not, it doesn't commensurate with what they do. They want more than what actually they deserve, and that's a very big issue, right? So, so we have always a clash on what the company wants and what the employee wants. Company wants produce more, work hard, give me more <laughs> labors, give me more, I work less, and that's it. So there's a conflict of interest in there between the two of them. So reaching an agreement is goes together with, uh, like I said, having a fair relationship. That is the ultimate goal of this, right? So in this case, union organization, it happens in many ways. Some companies it don't even allow unions to happen. Some of them are so against it that if you want to go into the union, I'm not going to deal with it. No unions at all. It's in your contract. No unions, etc. So it's a very debated thing, right? So, hey, uh, so here we don't. As managers, we should not discourage unions. Of course not. It is good to have a good bargaining power and a voice for the employees, but we have to make sure that that the activities of the union do not have a conflict with our operation, that everything works under a good legal framework. Uh, it covers the needs of both the employee and company, right? So. What shouldn't be done is to threat employees and saying, if you make a union, I'll fire you. You can watch the movie American Factory on Netflix. It's very interesting about how, for example, Americans want to create a union. And because of the working conditions are really bad in the company that they work for and how the the company that, that uh, hires them is a Chinese company. He threatens them. You you are part of the union. Oops, you're fired. So there's a lot of issues because because of that. No? So watch that one. It's very interesting. You'll understand this 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 better. I'm gonna put that, that maybe the link at the end. So in this case again, like I said, what we what we are aiming in the union is collective bargaining because in the end it's not the voice of one employee. We understand that, for example, if an employee is dismissed unfairly, that can happen to me next time and to all of the employees. And precisely that is where it comes to negotiate and, 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 and negotiate and do what we can help because we know that this situation is applicable to everyone, right? And so in this case, we have some areas of negotiation, which is a... First of all, we're going to establish how we're going to talk with the union, right? How they have to present their request. It's not, ah, you stop operations and that's not. Okay, you need to give a notice, how you're going to present it, who's going to do it, how we're going to do it, etc. We can talk about, for example, we can talk about salaries. We can talk about your rights or your work functions. We can talk about job income or security. We can talk about the operations. We can talk about holidays, benefits, and some any other things, right? So 
In this case, like I said, we discuss many things with the unions. Companies discuss many things with the unions. So what possibly is a problem for employees and how can it be fixed, right? Very good. Also, there's a bargaining over new contracts. That means the company, uh, we need to understand that companies are not static. They are very dynamic and they keep on changing. And sometimes the nature of the company completely changes because we they have to cope with technological change and environmental change. And you know, or like this case in the COVID-19, you have to fire people because you're not making money. And simple as that, I need to survive. And then they may say, yeah, it's unfair because in this situation, you shouldn't fire me. Fantastic. But again, the situation calls for new contracts and different kinds of contracts. So uh, in this case, it's tough and comes new contracts. And the union has to also collectively negotiate with the company to see out of this difficult situation, how we can get the best out of it. Right? And sometimes they say, okay, uh, I won't fire you, but I cannot pay you at this time. That means you continue to be an employee, but you can go home and I, can, I cannot continue paying when the situation in two months become better, when, when Corona is over, which never seems to be over, then I'll call you back. So that means you have secured a job and yeah, ideally it's not great because you're not getting paid, but at least kind of works. Because, you know, maybe you couldn't get a work anywhere else. All right. So in this case, we have uh, also when when the negotiations don't reach anywhere, there's a strike. Right. Uh, or it could be a lockout where the employee excludes workers from workplace until they meet certain conditions. So in this case, it could be both ways. No, we employ. OK, we don't work or. If you don't want to fulfill my new regulations, you cannot join my work. And there's alternatives to, to solve them, which is mediation. Like I said, I mean, uh, we talk about it. We, we find a middle ground for it between you and me. And that's it, right? We don't call any lawyers. We don't call any institutions. We just you and me. We can do the fact finder. Okay? So you say that... Probably the safety conditions of the employees are not well, and you're not going to work until you improve them. So I go and ask you which activities are unsafe. Let me explore them. So me, maybe as a manager, didn't know that. So I go and search, and I found that, yeah, the conditions are terrible. And in this case, I improved them. Then. I improved them, and that's it. And then the arbitration, arbitration, which is, okay, we try to negotiate, but you want more and I want less. We talked about the facts and I realized that whatever you're saying, it, it, safety conditions are not good, but I really checked the working conditions and they're okay. So I'm not willing to give up and you're not willing to give up. So we look for a third party. So that this third party usually involves uh, legal action, right? Or some external parties that will come and say, Okay, this guy is demanding better work conditions and increase of salary. You don't want to give it. So how about rather than 100% increase in salary, we 30? No, 40? 40%? Okay, works for you, work for them? Okay. But once you go for arbitration, you cannot, it is not ethical to not respect the agreement. In this case... Me as employer, okay, I'll take it, 40%. We agree to that, we agree to, okay. Not that, ah, 40%, oh, okay, agree, and then in one week, strike again. No, that's that's not an idea. And the same thing for the company. That means that I'm going to provide the conditions and I accept them. Right? They're like, oh, yeah, we agree to 40%, but but I can only do give you 30% now, and then in one year, 10 more percent. No, no, no. Whatever is agreed in this kind of mediation, fact finder, arbitration, has to the both parties have to accept it and that's it well, that's all and, and then continue work okay very good so here we have like for example the number of work stoppages and it has increased over the years this has changed we, we can see here for example 1970s <laughs> in the american market there were many stoppages because the conditions were not right and then has been decreasing because conditions are getting better 
we're starting to understand more uh, how employees work and there's more studies and I think that's beneficial. Precisely the, the precisely why in Korea we need to improve the conditions of employers, not because there are stoppages or riots or strikes, but because we want to have a better industry, right? So that's why the assignment that I gave. So anyways, we already talked about a talked about how goes a grievance procedure, which is in this case, uh, how it must be done, right? So in this case, a, um, the union discusses with the supervisor, supervisors bring that topic to the top management, top management discusses, they, they, they try to understand each other, then goes into the formalities, okay, this is what's happening, solve it, and then of course, he, everything starts to get on paper, there's meetings, and then also whatever is solved also on paper is, is given back, is, is, is solved or not, and if not, like I said, we have to go for for arbitration, and in arbitration is more a legal area, and then it gets solved, okay? So, um, yeah, pretty much that's it. Uh, again, uh, in this unit, we know, we understand that um, every employee has rights, and they must be exercised, but sometimes because of the low bargaining power that a single person has, unions are necessary. On the other hand, also, companies must be fair with their working practices so that, I mean, the use of unions is pretty much um, just, just, just when it's really unfair. And that's, it. okay. So very good. That's it for today. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you so much. And I'll see you, well, we're done with this, uh, with this subject and then I'll see you soon.